God bless you and welcome to Standing Together. My name is Fergus Scarf and we pray on behalf of all the God TV family around the world that today you feel loved, that today you feel supported, that today you understand that not just as a God TV team, but as the God TV family, we are standing together with one another all across the world. Well, we've got a very special broadcast today. Don't change that dial. We've got Pastor Cheon as our special guest today. But before we join Pastor Che, we'd like to share with you a basic truth here at God TV that we're here with you during these Standing Together broadcasts. We have a special website, hope.god.tv. That's hope.god.tv, where you can upload your prayer request, upload your testimony, and also join a member as a member of our Intercessors Army praying for your brothers and sisters around the world. Well, as Ward so often reminds us, there are three pillars that drive the passion of this ministry as a media outreach, expanding the kingdom of God. They are souls, Israel, and revival. Well, here is souls. At God TV, we are passionate about souls. We want to take the gospel to the ends of the earth. Reaching the poor, the hurting and the needy and the desperate with the good news of Jesus Christ. Help has a name and it's Jesus Christ and he's here for you right now. Our method is television, but we have the same mandate given by Jesus 2,000 years ago. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creations. I'm here in the Kananara region of the Kimberleys. We've been able to install God TV into so many homes that's going to have an impact throughout this region of the world. God TV broadcasts to over 300 million connected homes across the earth with a potential viewing audience of over 1 billion people. As well as online, 24 hours a day, we are reaching people wherever they are on and whatever devices they are using. I'm watching God TV more now, either on my phone or on my iPad. There's all this technology, and God's given us this to make use of it. Touching lives with the good news of Jesus Christ. Support the fulfillment of the Great Commission by supporting God TV. The Holy Spirit is hovering over the ministry of God TV, and that's why I love to give into God TV. Because of your support of God TV, we are able to reach into 300 million homes across the world, night and day, 24-7, 365 days a year. Thank you from us all for your precious, precious support. Well, today I'm joined in the broadcast by Pastor Che An from Harvest Rock Church in Pasadena, California. Pastor Che, welcome to the broadcast, sir. Thanks so much for joining us. Well, thank you, Fergus. Uh, thank you. Um, it's a real pleasure, sir. You're joining us as, a, as one of the God TV favorites. You've been part of so many of the ministry outreaches and conferences that we've broadcast across our, mm -hmm. our network in so many years. But, sir, right now you're actually launching a new program series, Equipping the Saints on God TV. Um, why, what inspired you to start this new program series? Well, you know, uh, Cindy Jacobs, I, she's been on God TV so many times, uh, gave me a prophetic word going all the way back to 1998 uh, that I would be on God TV uh, and going around the world. At that time, um, uh, the timing was off, but uh, we just waited on the Lord. And uh, I just felt at this season, uh, with all the shaking going on around the world, that we need to um, advance the kingdom by equipping the saints for the work of ministry. So that's the name of the show, Equipping the Saints uh, for, for the Work of Ministry. And we have some top uh, guests on our show. And uh, we're really trying to see transformation take place in people's lives, but also around the world. Oh, it's so encouraging, Pastor, and we're so grateful that you've taken the lead here in launching this new program series. Sir, these are unprecedented times, and these Standing Together broadcasts have been so encouraging that we get to pray with our viewers and stand with them through this crisis. You lead a great church out on America's West Coast. What do you believe that the Lord is saying to us at this time? 
Well, I've been really meditate on Haggai, Haggai chapter 2, verse 7, and God says that he's going to shake the nations, but the good news is that he will fill the temple with his spirit. Amen. And so I feel that we're seeing both the shaking going on with this COVID-19, with the economic meltdown taking place globally, and of course, in our nation, we've had tremendous unrest, protests, and even riots taking place. Uh, with the shaking, though, I believe that God's going to bring the greatest revival. Historically, there was always a dark time before revival broke out. Even in your country, in the uh, Great Britain, uh, in uh, 1738, before the uh, Great Awakening began with Whitfield and Wesley, there was a very dark time. Uh, London experience was called the Black Plague, which mm -hmm. really hit Europe uh, almost like 700 years, years before, but finally came to England and London. And then also it was a gin age. Uh, gin had been invented like 30 years before, but it became common. And every fourth house became a gin house. People wanted to have extra revenue source. And overnight, a nation became a nation of alcoholics. And we think of England experiencing tremendous um, that Victorian uh, stage. Uh, but that happened a century later because of the revival. Uh, but prior to that time was a very dark time, high crime rate, high unemployment, um, high uh, immorality with prostitutionism because women were now alcoholics and, and they sold their bodies in order to support their habit. And in the midst of that darkness, the gospel was being preached by Whitfield uh, primarily, and then John Wesley and the Wesley brothers and brought a great revival that impacted our nation as well. You bring such encouragement to give this historical perspective. At Harvest Rock Church, what are you ministering to your congregation? What is the Lord telling you to minister to your own flock at this time? Well, uh, primarily a message of hope, and so I've been talking about revival hope, basically the message I just gave that every historic revival, there was always a dark period before revival broke out. And um, I've been also just trying to you know, give people uh, more of heaven on earth because as the word says in Romans 14, 17, the kingdom of God is not meat or drink, it's not the physical world, but is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. And right now, people need more more peace. Uh, they're full of anxiety. Uh, they're battling, uh, of course, this lockdown, COVID-19 lockdown. Uh, the economy is being shaken, and there's, there's a lot of fear taking place. And so, you know, as the Bible says, He has not given us a spirit of fear in 2 Timothy 1, 7, but power, love, and a sound mind. So I'm trying to get people's minds renewed uh, mm -hmm. to really seek first His kingdom and do what's right, and all these things will be added unto us. What's really interesting in uh, Romans 14, 17, that word, righteousness, peace, and joy, that word righteous is really uh, translated justice. Um, N.T. Wright, wow. one of my favorite scholars, translates that as justice. And so God wants to see justice, peace, and joy. And I think in the midst of uh, George Floyd, uh, uh, tragic uh racist murder that took place in our nation. I think everyone recognized that that was murder, uh, that uh, God is speaking and shouting that he wants justice. And it always begins with the church. Um, 1 Peter 4, 17, uh, the Bible says, uh, judgment begins in the house of the Lord. And so it is, if my people will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, not the government, not the world, but if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven, forgive their sins and heal their land. Because ultimately what we need is a uh, uh, is heaven's invasion on earth. Uh, we, we need to see his kingdom come, his will be done. Uh, in other words, we need revival. And, uh, and so I thank God for God TV for having a passion for souls and Israel and revival. And that really is the answer because we're at a place um, where the psalmist says in Psalm uh, 127, unless the Lord builds a house, those who labor, labor in vain. And the other verse that comes to my mind is Zechariah 4, 6, it's not by might, it's not by our power, our ability to solve anything, but by my spirit, says the Lord. So we need to see a supernatural breakthrough, uh, even if God uses uh, uh, 
uh, scientists to, to create a vaccine for the COVID-19 or a supernatural breakthrough where the vaccine just dies out. But we need to see a breakthrough take place globally because this is really hurting, especially the poor around the world. Uh, a lot of people are suffering, but especially the poor, and uh, not only economically, but even um, uh, the uh, the uh, unfortunately the people who are the high risk people are people who are really don't have a good healthy diet and their immune systems are not strong and uh, and as a result of that they are more susceptible to COVID nineteen and so it usually is the marginalized and poor that are impacted by this uh, virus. Thank you so much, Pastor Che. This is why as the God TV family, we want you to be equipped and why it is so prescient that Pastor Che's new program series, Equipping the Saints, is launching soon on God TV. Hi, I'm Che On. And I'm Joy On New, the co-host of a brand new show on God TV called Equipping the Saints with Che On. I'm so excited about this show because we are bringing in amazing leaders from around the world to equip you, but not just to equip you, but to give you an impartation. One of the things that we value is the presence of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And we're gonna invite the Holy Spirit to come and we have a good portion of our time to minister to you in words of knowledge and prophecy and prayer. And we believe that your life will be transformed by this show. We hope to see you then. Get faith-focused content for every part of life. With hundreds of videos, articles, and more. Do you need a supernatural empowerment to you become a better person? Get God daily for faith applied to every part of life. Give Jesus just one chance. Sign up today. Go to godtv.com. A program series launching on God TV, equipping the saints with Pastor Che Ahn. And Pastor Che, not just yourself, but also your daughter, Joy. Pastor, how important is it to function in ministry with your family? What's the difference that it really makes? It is an honor. It's a tremendous blessing. Uh, the thing that my wife and I are so grateful for is that uh, my, my adult children, my four adult children, all of them are married, and uh, they love Jesus Christ, and they're serving God, and so that is such a blessing. And and what I wanted to do was to really have, uh, even on television, show two generations coming together to advance God's kingdom. And so usually uh, when a show is being hosted, it's by a husband and wife, and I could obviously have my wife, who's amazing, um, a woman of God, and she's one of our pastors, and she's a prophet in my life, uh, be the co-host. But I felt like the Lord said that we're in the Malachi chapter 4, 5, 6 period, and that he is turning the hearts of the fathers to the children, hearts of the children and the fathers, and to have two generations come together, I feel is a prophetic statement that God is going to bring revival and reformation to our nation. Pastor, it's so encouraging to hear what the Lord is doing through your life and ministry. If we may, can we go back even 30, 40 years? It's so wonderful to know your dedication and you and your family ministering before the Lord for literally a generation. But where did you first sense your own call to ministry? Well, my father is a pastor. He was the first Korean Southern Baptist pastor in North America. And uh, on my mom's side, uh, my grandparents were the founding elders of this very large Presbyterian church called Young Nok Presbyterian Church. And so my history really goes back to the Pyongyang revival that broke out in what is now the capital of North Korea in um, 1907. And so I know there was a generational blessing that came and, um, and my parents and my grandparents prayed me into the kingdom because I really rebelled against God. And I was your worst prodigal son, <laughs> pastor's kid that was on drugs and, and doing my own thing. But, uh, and I always say, if your grandparents are praying for you, you don't have a chance. And so <laughs> I got radically saved in 1973 during the Jesus People Movement. And, um, and right away, I knew I was called. Uh, my mom actually had a dream when I was in her womb that I was going to be a pastor. And so when I was born, my grandfather, again, an elder from Yelnock Presbyterian Church, dedicated me to the ministry. So again, I just didn't have a chance, you know. And so uh, when I got saved, I knew I was called into ministry, and I've been serving the Lord really since 1973. 
Okay, you're not getting out of this one. I want you to talk, if be so kind, to all those praying grandmas out there. If they've got some prodigals in their own family, sir, what would you be saying to the God TV family about praying in the prodigals? How do we do it? Well, the Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus and Amen. you and your family will be saved. And so that is a tremendous promise. And and uh, I, I just feel like no matter how bad it looks, God's a God of miracles. All things are possible with him. And as we pray in earnest, uh, I believe that based on the shed blood of Jesus Christ, who died for all, uh, that we can claim our prodigal son, daughter, back into the kingdom. And um, and if they're not saved, that they will be saved. If they're backslidden, they'll come back. And so we have seen, uh, by God's grace, you know, my uh, my kids uh, never had that prodigal season like I did uh, when I was uh, a pastor's kid growing up. But, uh, but I do believe that... Uh, the power of prayer, seeing my family come to know the Lord. J. Oswald Saunders, who uh, wrote book, uh, maybe the best book on leadership, uh, uh, said, it is doubtful that any soul is saved apart from the believing prayer of some saint. Now think about that. If anyone comes to know Jesus Christ, someone was praying for them. That's what Oswald Saunders was saying. And so I believe that as we pray uh, for our loved ones, um, and I can testify because I have, my wife and I, uh, we had a list, I believe was around 23 uh, relatives uh, that we put, wrote down in the back of our Bible. And every Tuesday we fasted uh, breakfast and lunch. It wasn't a huge fast, but we fasted and prayed for our family members. And one by one, they came to know the Lord. And the last one was my uncle, who's a Buddhist, alcoholic, uh, just totally uh, uh, into materialism. Uh, money was his God, a successful businessman. And uh, we just prayed for him for over 30 years. And he was the last one on our list. And he got saved, believe it or not, at a Benny Hinn service and got filled with the Holy Spirit. And now he's part of the IHOP community in Kansas City with Mike Bickle. And so uh, with God, all things are possible. So I encourage you to pray for your loved ones. And I think that's one of the most powerful things we can do as believers. We're after souls, but the, the Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 2, uh, he wants us to pray for all men. Yes, for Amen. kings and those who are in authority, Amen. but we're to pray for all people because then in verse 4, it says, God desires all to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. And so we have a mandate from our Lord to pray and to preach the good news of his kingdom. Oh, if that's you out there, if the Lord is ministering to your heart right now, then please go to hope.god.tv. That's our, our website throughout this season, this standing together season, and put up the names of your loved ones so that we can be standing together. We can be, as pastor says, 1 Timothy chapter 2, praying for all men. We want to stand with you and your families list, your families list, to see them into the kingdom. Kingdom in Jesus' precious name. Uh, Pastor, you have an amazing legacy, a legacy of, of family ministry, but one of the great influences in your own life is, is the great apostolic elder Peter Wagner or Wagner. Uh, can you tell us, can you tell us more about Peter and his impact on your life and ministry? Uh, Peter had a huge impact, uh, maybe the most significant person in my life, uh, next to my wife. Um, I enrolled at Fuller Seminary in 1984 to work on my Master, Master of Divinity. And I really believe that God brought me to Fuller Seminary and to Pasadena, where I now live and pastor, uh, to really connect with Peter Wagner. And Peter uh, just took me under his wing. You know, he has thousands of students. For whatever reason, he just really felt connected uh, to really pour into me. Uh, he uh, invited me to be part of his apostolic team. And um, I was the only student, you know, all these major leaders like Cindy Jacobs, Dutch Sheets, you know, uh, Robert Henderson were part of his apostolic team, uh, Ed Savoso, uh, and uh, even Bishop Bill Hammond. So he had a very um, impressive uh, team of leaders. But he asked me, I joke, I was like the token Asian, you know, but, but anyway, uh, he invited me to be part of his team. And, uh, and then uh, I grew uh, 
in uh, my relationship with him because I end up getting my doctorate at Fuller. And so four years of my Master of Divinity and four years of my Doctor of Ministry. And so eight years studying under Peter Wagner. And I could honestly say I've read every single book that he wrote. Now, to give you an idea how many books he wrote, he almost wrote 90 books. Wow. Almost a book for every year of his life. And uh, he died at the age of 87 um, in 2016. And so uh, what a, uh, and I can honestly say I wouldn't be where I am if it wasn't for the mentorship of uh, Peter Wagner. So I want to encourage people to have a mentor. That's why I feel so passionate to uh, about the show, to equip the saints, because I feel in some ways, I, as a person who's been walking with the Lord for 47 years and 41 years in ministry, I want to mentor uh, the next generation. I feel I am a spiritual father. In fact, I'm a grandfather, and I want to pour myself out to the next generation, that they will go way beyond anything I've experienced or anything that our generation has experienced. And so that is one of the reasons why for the show. Wow. Equipping the Saints will be on God TV. You can not only see it on the channel, but also on our website, God.tv and on the precious God TV app. So Papa Che, I'm sitting at your feet. I want to learn more on behalf of all our God TV family. I've got a very, very sort of blunt and simple question during these very challenging times. Where do you find hope and how do you sustain hope? Well, hope, of course, is, is Jesus, because mm -hmm. he is the hope of glory, Christ in you, the hope of glory in mm -hmm. Colossians 1, 27. And, uh, and to me, uh, as I just draw closer to Jesus, uh, he's the one who's the one who sustains. You know, so many young people and people that I uh, oversee as far as being a pastor, uh, they've always complained to me they don't have enough time to spend time with the Lord. And, uh, you know, with work or with school, and they're really busy. Well, there's no excuse. Now with the COVID-19, we're locked down. And, uh, and I feel like God's given us a divine pause for us to really focus on our relationship with the Lord. I feel we're in a big test. And it's how we handle this uh, adversity that really will take us to the next level in our relationship with the Lord. And so I feel uh, that God is uh, giving us this undistracted time of having our hearts set in our first love devotion to Jesus Christ. And as we draw near to him, he promises in James 4, he will draw near to us. And so that's my answer is that hope is in Jesus. And, and the closer you become uh, to the Lord, uh, then you're going to see a, a, a positive, uh, I define hope as a positive expectation from a good God uh, in the future. And he is a good father and he will bless you as you uh, have your faith and hope in him. Oh, bless you, Pastor. Thank you so much. Just as we come to the end of this broadcast, Papa Che, would you pray for us as a God TV family that we would go through this test well and come out stronger on the other side? Yes, I'd be happy to. Um, it, uh, the verse that comes to my mind, whom the Father loves, he disciplines, and we don't like it, but we know that as we are disciplined, we bear the fruit of righteousness. Uh, Father, I pray uh, that as you have uh, used all things for the good, that you're using even this COVID-19 uh, pandemic to make us more Christ-like. Help us to pass the test. Give us grace, Lord. We, we acknowledge we can't do it in our own strength. Uh, but Lord, we humble ourselves before you. And we say with David, search us, O God, and know our hearts and try us to know our anxious thoughts and see if there be any evil way within us. During this divine discipline, Lord, we ask you to show us if there's sin in our lives, anything that will hinder us from uh, really come in, coming into our destiny, uh, that you have a plan and purpose for each one. And so I pray, Lord God, that you would just uh, lavish your grace upon us to fulfill uh, and pass this test that we're going through so that we can come into the next level of our divine appointment with you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Pastor, thank you so much. Sir, just before we let you go, and we're so encouraged about equipping the saints on God TV. It is fabulous. I was up late last night watching several of these new episodes. Sir, how can we be praying for you and your family and your ministry at this time? How can we reciprocate in prayer? 
Well, thank you, Fergus. Uh, you know, we do need uh, a lot of grace. We are really praying for our nation. Mm. I feel our nation is at a crossroad. Uh, many of you have been seeing the uh, protests, the riots, the uh, a lot of the statues uh, going down. And so I feel there's a battle for our nation. And so uh, right now I'm focused on seeing revival and reformation take place in the United States. And of course, we're praying that for all the nations. And our ministry uh, really went to the nations first. We are, by God's grace, in 70 nations as a ministry called Harvest International Ministry. But I feel that God is saying that as America goes, so goes the rest of the world. And he really wants to give a breakthrough to the United States so we can be a blessing uh, to the UK and to the nations. So continue to pray for us and that we would see revival and reformation take place in the United States. Oh, God bless you, Pastor. Thank you so, so much. And on behalf of all the God TV family, we will be praying for you. That is a prophetic word. As goes America, so goes the rest of the world. So as we are in the rest of the world, we pray that you will stand with Papa Che, stand with his ministry, be equipped by the programming that he's bringing into our lives. It is amazing. It's so rare to have somebody with generations experience experience in the things of God. Just imagine a man who's read over 90 books of one minister is going to be coming into our homes on a weekly basis, but not just him. Some absolutely tremendous, what I would call A-list ministers, seasoned in the things of God, knowing the Father well, and that the Lord has gathered this time in ministry absolutely excellent programs, but not just with Pastor Che, also with his daughter, Joy. It's really wonderful. And if I may let you into a secret, there's actually a program where Pastor is on with his wife, Sue, interviewed by Joy. And you've got mom, dad, daughter, son. It's a it's an absolutely wonderful dynamic and one that we pray blesses us all in this time ahead. Well, we've got just a little bit of time just to share with you, our precious God TV family. We we are standing together with you at this time. This is not a time to be on the back foot. This is a time to be on the front foot in the things of God. So if we can pray for you, if we can stand with you, if we can see you blessed today, then please do go to our website, hope.god.tv. Not just for that personal prayer request, but also as Pastor Che was sharing with us, also perhaps put your family members on there. What did he have? 23 members of his family that over 30 years he prayed for. Well, at the end of this progress, we pray that you are blessed today and that you know truly on behalf of all of us here at the God TV family that we are standing together until the Lord sees us safely to the other side. 